Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're celebrating the talent and hard work of the Parsons School of Design students. The fashion presentation by this year's MFAs. I can't wait to see what they have in store for us. No question, this has been a very, very tough year on so many levels, but we have to give the students and the faculty so much credit. They've centered themselves, switched gears, and kept on going. Even when much of the fashion industry was ready to throw up his hands and in the air, the unique education that these brilliant young people received at Parsons prepared them to stay nimble and rededicate themselves to their work and their mission. They come from many different backgrounds, but they are all united in their commitment to artistry, individuality, sustainability, and innovation. As an alumni, I can tell you that the program is second to none, and it gets better and better every year. So thank you for supporting the school and these students tonight. And now I'm delighted to introduce the president of the new school, Dr. Dwight McBride. Hello, I'm Dwight McBride, president of the new school. And thank you for joining us tonight for this toast to our students. Of course, we'd love to be toasting in person, but this year we've all had to pivot. I have to applaud our students, our staff, our faculty for persevering and working together as a community to rise to the challenges that we're facing. I'm also incredibly grateful to everyone in the New School Network who has stepped up in generous support of our students, including our alumni, parents, friends, faculty, staff, and the students themselves. Our student body is made up of creative, collaborative, committed people from around the world who come to us with diverse backgrounds and innovative approaches. Each year, the university awards up to 80% of our students with scholarship, fellowships, and financial aid. This year, the pandemic has put a new set of financial pressures on our university and on our students. So we're counting on you more than we ever have before to help us to continue to offer a world-class education to those talented young people, regardless of their socioeconomic circumstances. So I need you tonight to simply text the word Parsons, P-A-R-S-O-N-S, to 707070, and your donation will support scholarships, technology grants, and other forms of direct student support. When you see and hear from our 2020 Fashion Design and Society MFA students tonight, you'll understand why you're not just providing a gift to them, but to our collective future, which we envision as more expressive, inclusive, and just. In fact, I'll give you a little peek right now. And I thank you again from the bottom of my heart for your generosity and for your support. Do you feel like you belong in the fashion industry? What is fashion? <laughs> I feel like as designers, we are revolutionizing the fashion industry. I want to find a solution to help something or to solve something. The most exciting thing is how everyone is now really questioning the value of their time. And maybe there is a possibility for new ways of thinking. Hello, I am Pedro Troncoso, a Parsons alumni from the illustration department. Of course, I can now proudly say it, but it will be impossible without my scholarship. It allowed me to get in depth into what I love, art. At first, I just wanted to paint, but the privilege of a scholarship has turned my passions into a purpose. One of them is to give back that support to our dreamer communities, as I know how motivating it is for a student to feel they are not alone fighting for their goals. My scholarship symbolizes my first time being abroad, from the Dominican Republic to New York. Professionally and personally, it has allowed me to feel fearless to pursue anything I want in life. That's why I'm currently pursuing a master's in fine arts in the same country to which I arrived, barely speaking English. It just reminds me that once it begins, the journey never stops. And that's why this type of support are more than needed. 
because there is no way back once a student has committed to run and chase their dreams. Specifically, when there is somebody making the first step in their journeys possible. For these reasons, my family and I will be forever grateful. Thank you for completely changed my life for good. Muchas gracias. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Schreiber, Executive Dean of Parsons School of Design. Thank you so much for being part of this toast to our students. Though we were unable to host our annual in-person benefit in May, we were still eager to bring everyone together to support our students, not only showcasing their amazing work, but also to ensure that we do all we can to raise scholarship funds that are needed now more than ever. Like much of the fashion industry, we had to pivot from our usual presentations at New York Fashion Week to a virtual showcase. Though I know we all wish we could be together in one space, there are a few advantages to being together in this way, as it means that this evening, we are able to have people join us from all over the globe, reflecting how truly international our community is. This format also gives the students the essential skills to represent themselves on a virtual platform and a head start in the profession they are entering. As you will soon see, our students have responded to this moment with creativity and resilience. Both are qualities that have been nurtured for them here at Parsons. The students whose work will be presented tonight have been part of our MFA program in fashion design and society, and we take all three elements very seriously. For us here at Parsons, design and fashion must engage with society in deep and meaningful ways. And that is what our students have accomplished. So tonight we toast their extraordinary efforts and encourage everyone watching to support our students with the scholarship funds they so richly deserve. I have been impressed and deeply moved by their perseverance and commitment to learning, not only in the face of adversity, but because of it. I raise my virtual glass to them and to all of you for supporting them tonight. Thank you. And now we'll hear a few words from co-chair of the Parsons Board of Governors, Liz Rodbell, and board member, Gina Smith. Hi, Gina. Hi, Liz. Oh, I so miss you and I miss being with all our friends and Parsons supporters this year. Me too. I am so sad that we're not all together in person, but I'm so happy that we are still doing this amazing toast to our incredible students because the ingenuity that Parsons MFAs bring to design are really shaking up the industry in the most creative and essential ways. And I truly believe that these students can change the world. And this pandemic has shown us how much we need their leadership right now. I could not agree more. Tonight, we are asking everyone to donate whatever you can. Just text the word Parsons to 707070. Here are a few examples of what your giving can do. $500 will provide a technology grant to a student working remotely who needs special design software or high-speed internet. $1,000 will provide an emergency grant to a student who needs help with housing, medical, or childcare expenses. Donations of $2,500 to $6,000 cover a range of scholarships for Parsons and new school students and earn you a special gift from both Clico. And oh, do I like that. And if you can donate $10,000, you'll be able to provide a one-year scholarship to a deserving student. So please text Parsons to 707070 and open doors and opportunities for these talented young people who are addressing the most complex issues of our times in the most creative ways. Thank you for your support and here's to our students. Cheers. Cheers. And now another look at our upcoming fashion presentation. 
when all of a sudden everything kind of collapsed and you feel like you have nothing, it's kind of like another way to say like, oh, now you kind of have everything because like everything is possible. I feel like when humans actually engage in craft, mistakes do occur, and I think that's something that should really be celebrated. Things mean more, and we like use them for longer, and like find ways to keep making the same things exciting to us. Then that's a really positive thing for not just the industry, but just like life in general. It's very hard to uh, reflect upon a speech. <laughs> it's hard enough to give a speech or to do it well, but. I found my remarks from that beautiful evening in 2016, which seems now like a lifetime ago. Um, what struck me is that what I was mostly talking about were the people that I've been so fortunate to work with and learn from. Lars, the tailor that I spoke so fondly of, who continues to be not just an exquisitely skilled tailor, but also a teacher. And um, I think the the rest of the couple of minutes that I spoke was really just about the good fortune I've had to be surrounded by really inspired, talented artists, and that I was always learning and absorbing and taking as much as I could from their shared talent, and that it's been something that I've always sort of been, which is a curious person who wants to be allowed in to watch and to learn. And so... Four years later, <laughs> a lifetime later, I still feel enormously privileged to call upon memories that are um, populated mostly by extraordinary men and women who have been good enough to share their time with me.
Hi, my name is Virgil Avlo, and I'm checking in with the graduating students from Parsons of this year, 2020. Safe to say this has been an unprecedented time in our existence, but your perseverance and commitment to graduation is commendable and is a sign of our bright future. Take care. Hi, I'm Shelley Fox the director of the MFA Fashion Design Society program and the Donna Cameron Professor of Fashion. And I'm so happy to be able to share this year's graduate showcase with you all. This program is intimate, intense, and an incredible personal affair. The mentorship we offer pulls out the best in our students. And this year saw that materialize particularly when the world fell off a cliff. Our faculty and students responded in the best way they know how, with commitment, passion, and above all, a deep and critical perspective of what it takes to continue to be creative and resourceful in a world that is beyond uncertain. They are all capitalize on their individual strengths as designers and thinkers and took on board what was going on around them. The name of the program itself, Fashion, Design and Society. Fashion is never separate from the world, but is a powerful tool which offers a reflection of it. What you are about to see represents 10 different designers with 10 different points of view on 10 different journeys. An eclectic mix of their work, emotion, craft and process, which is deeply personal to each one of them. These young designers come from diverse backgrounds from all over the world and every single one of them has something valuable and special to contribute. Lastly, I'd like to share my deep gratitude to every single person that has contributed to this documentary film we couldn't have done it without any of you. But in particular, I have a special thank you to Yoff, the Associate Director, for all his commitment to the MFA programme. So let's raise a glass to our 2020 MFA designers, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. What are the bigger questions that we want to ask and we might not even have the answers. And that could be quite interesting in a good way, you know. All of this is just really about transformation, right? That's really what this program is focusing on. Imagine to yourself as a fashion designer, but 20% of what you do is only about clothes. What does the other 80% look like? I feel like as designers, we are revolutionizing the fashion industry. What is fashion? <laughs> I want to find a solution to help something or to solve something. The most exciting thing is how everyone is now really questioning the value of their time and maybe there's a possibility for new ways of thinking. I want to find a solution to help something or to solve something instead of creating something that's already existed. My parents, they're from the business side, and when my mother gets home, she has to be a mother and also a businesswoman. She has to be on and off, switching in between roles. So that kind of gave me an idea. If I could create flexibility within the suit, that, that allows her to perform more freely. The idea initially started when I was buying fruits in the supermarket and I would see these fruits being wrapped around in this web-like foam. 
So that kind of gave me an idea if I could create flexibility within the suit, but still looking sharp. So I did laser cutting. Perception, projection, and reflection. So creating flexibility within the classic suit. It's almost like breaking out of the suit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do miss my home a lot. I don't have the time to make new friends here. I kind of like feel I'm the surface of the New York. I'm just in the person's little like tiny studio with my classmates together. But for this year, I, I know I need to work here. I need to learn. Because I'm not in China now, I feel the special connection of this traditional Chinese calligraphy. This can have a connection to my family. Because my father is an amateur painter, the way how we talk, it's like, oh, he got some new paintings and he sent through this WeChat to me to let me say, oh, how you feeling about my paintings? And I feel that moment as just was so touching. So I kind of like feel, oh, okay, this ink painting or this calligraphy is a special way how it connected me to my family. When the students come into the program, you're really trying to tap into their own psyche. I want them to be able to stand on their own two feet, be independent, to navigate the world more smartly. It's also about building trust with each other. If I want my students to open up and share their inner thinking and inner thoughts, then I have to offer the same thing back in order to have a conversation that is meaningful but also having the understanding how difficult that really can be. The starting point was like making a zine. DIY processes and like graphic languages and like combining them again with like archetypal garments, blazers, work suits. Making is kind of a collage effect. If there is a drawing of a cowboy, that kind of silhouette will inform the shape of the garment. It's kind of like full embodiment of photographic imagery. So it's like similar, it's like making a zine, it's just like a different lens. During this time, I was like really frustrated. And my mom always like tell me some a saying in, in Chinese. If you are a beautiful enough flower, the butterfly will just like naturally come to you. When I was in Taiwan, I kind of like have the natural fear of exposing myself. What if my parents kind of found out that I'm a gay? I haven't really came out fully with them. The very first project of our program is a collaboration project with a homeless transgender youth from that project, I started to get in touch with like people who have the similar experience as I do. I just like gradually kind of getting over the fear of what I had in Taiwan. It's just like a really long process of appreciating the freedom and openness of what New York City is. I feel clothes should be serving other people. It's not only purely about self-expression. Mm, so, I was born in an inner city of the China and it has a lot of small commodity markets there. It's like very, very noisy and intensive place. I always went there for shopping and I see like piles of toys and intensive colors. I always imagine I'm those toys and fight with each other. So I combined like those kind of small and strange components and like engineered into the garment. But I think this kind of synthetic material, if we are not abandoned them, like we are using them for a long time, it won't end up in the ocean. So I kind of like turned those synthetic material and plastic into something that people may like love it and keep it. And it won't be like broken, it will be treasured and it will like last forever. Because I always walk slower than others, I think it's 
a weakness that I don't like to face before. This time, I want to face to my weakness of my own physical body and to find some dialogue between that and my collection. So I began to draw marks on my own body parts, like legs, arms, and neck. I think it's a process to like re-render my marks and treat my body as my own canvas. So like a second skin. It has optical illusion. I think for the fashion, everyone needs to be different. We don't need to fit in it. Because I really don't want to be a manager and to do the same job like 20 years. Life is repeat, 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 repeat. Practically in the studio from weekdays to weekend, you need to be by yourself. You need to have all these equipments by you so you can work. Fashion needs that to push us to create new things, to meet deadlines, to keep moving forward. I swear to God, like I would go to sleep at like 5.30 a.m., go to a friend's house, sleep for 30 minutes, and go back into the studio. For young people, we're figuring out how to work within the fashion system. You need to really be able to adapt and grow with your project as it kind of becomes sentient and really embrace that. Knowing that you might not arrive exactly where you thought you were, but that is okay. It was putting a lot of pressure on myself to fulfill like the expectation of what a fashion designer should be. Relinquishing power allows your materials to do what they, they want to do. Not having so much control is really liberating. It also really celebrates human touch. There's definitely a way to like awaken people's thinking so that they're able to like generate their own thoughts and really interact with materials in unique and intimate ways. What I'm trying to do is recreate the memories and make them more physical. It's based on a series of photographs taken by my grandfather. The idea is rooted in being children of immigrants and not knowing your cultural or historical family roots. I'm recreating that through different textiles and piecing them together. Fashion is a very tough industry and I think part of the misunderstanding is the time and the labour intensive elements towards it. Maybe if there was more awareness to that, people maybe would have more appreciation of like garments rather than fashion as like this frivolous thing. Fashion, there's many issues with it in terms of like labour issues, environmental issues and I want to contribute positively the best I can as a designer. I really hope the consumer is thinking about the clothing and where the clothes were made and they're excited by material and they're excited by the process and there isn't such a huge detachment from product and design. Being a good designer means solving a problem and you're trying to design for and creating a solution to help someone. It was so important to develop a thesis collection based on fitting all types of bodies that aren't included in the fashion industry. I always had this intense frustration with how the industry never really catered for people of my body size and shape. And I feel like we are so multi-dimensional and our clothes still remain the same. Like, having the ability to fit an extra small to an extra large but also have a multifunctional aspect to them so that they aren't just one form-fitting garment or object. It can morph back and forth between, you know, leotards and bags and hair scrunchies and a dress, kind of like an all-in-one piece. I was looking into ideas of preservation, but also longevity. And longevity is so important in my design process because, you know, I use upcycling from like old objects and heirlooms that I've accumulated over the course of my life. And now I feel like that they, they can live after the runway and filling that gap that the industry neglects a lot. I'm obsessed with this tension between 
the real life and imaginary fantasy. Doing the fashion design, I feel like it's more interesting than just creating characters on paper. I really like to watch people become my characters. Some of my garments are really irregular, and some of them have this exaggerated details. For me, it's just like building a fantasy land to recreate things and people I knew in real life. My work is trying to combine this sophisticated craft with child's play. The idea of the industry is one thing and the reality of it is another. It's also a huge space where they can exist. And I also feel like if it doesn't exist yet, then they should make it exist. You know, you need to be obsessive, be tenacious and challenge yourself, be critical. Designing is always about problem solving to a certain degree. And that's a lot where the innovation really lies. Yeah, this will be our last question. Do you feel like you belong in the fashion industry? Do I feel like I belong in the fashion industry? When all of a sudden everything kind of collapsed and you feel like you have nothing, it's kind of like another way to say like, oh, now you kind of have everything because like everything is possible. We've really started to associate manufacturing and perfection as normal. I feel like when humans actually engage in craft, mistakes do occur and I think that's something that should really be celebrated. We're living in a very wasteful time and pretty reckless about it. If things mean more and we like use them for longer and like find ways to keep making the same things exciting to us then that's a really positive thing for you know not just the industry but just like life in general. You're trying to open up another world to them to equip them and take a stand about their own work and give them that confidence. It doesn't always make sense to them when they're in the program. It could be a year, two years, three years. It all falls into place for them. Congratulations, MFAs. Your work is truly next level. It's thrilling to know that you are using such innovative techniques to make our world more user-friendly, inclusive, and interesting. A big thank you to all of the students who participated in this year's fashion presentation, to Shelley Fox, Jaf Mulhuizen, and all the esteemed faculty and staff at Parsons for their guidance and mentorship especially this year. As this toast to our students comes to a close, I want to remind everyone watching that you can support them with a tap of your finger. Text the word Parsons to 707070 and we'll be able to support even more students at the new school with scholarships and grants that will lead them and us into a bright future. Thank you. And cheers. <laughs>